All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll give everybody a second to uh, file in here. We've got quite a lot of people here, which is awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome athletes, parents, and coaches to another edition of Hashtag FFT Live presented by Fitter and Faster Swim Camps. My name is Tyler Clary, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Fitter and Faster. I hope everybody is enjoying our live series so far. Uh, let us know in chat where you're from and what team you're representing. If at any time the chat begins to get overwhelming, you can minimize it using the red button over here at the right-hand side of your screen with three vertical white dots, and that'll like minimize the chat over to the right. Please do not spam. If you spam, I will ban you from this webinar. That being said, I'll try to keep chat enabled for questions as you think of them. But if it begins to become too much and it starts to take away from the presentation, I'll disable it and reopen chat at the end for questions. With that being said, let's get started. Welcome to this episode titled Breaking Down Breaststroke. We've gotten a lot of requests about this specific topic and I hope you enjoy it. Make sure that while the presenters are speaking that you're writing down notes because that's the best way to remember it five, six, seven weeks from now. Also, we will be providing you a copy of this replay in a couple of hours. Without further ado, let me introduce our presenters, Kiara Smith and Austin Serhoff. Kiara Smith is a 2016 Olympic finalist. She's also a 2015 Pan American Games champion and a 2015 NC2A champion. She's a 2019 World Championships medalist and is currently training in Kelowna, British Columbia, formally training in Toronto and Minneapolis earlier this year. Austin Serhoff is a coach for John Hopkins University swim team in Baltimore, Maryland, and he has run over 40 clinics with Fitter and Faster. As a swimmer, Austin was a two-time NC2A champion for the University of Texas and a two-time Olympic trials finalist in the 200 IM. Last fall, Austin qualified for his fourth Olympic trials in the 50 freestyle, which is pretty awesome because he swims a whole lot of stuff. Breaststroke was actually his worst stroke going up, just like me, and now he loves coaching it. And that's kind of an interesting point that we'll talk about a little later. Just because you're bad at a stroke doesn't necessarily mean you don't understand it very well. And Austin's a great example of that. Welcome, Kieran and Austin. Hey, Tyler. Thanks for having us. No, it's good to have you. Hi, Kira. Oh, audio, Kira. Kira. Your audio on. Audio. <laughs> Embarrassing. Sorry, I got it. Wow, all that practice. Okay. I messed it up. Anyways, I'm loving the chat is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, chat. chat's awesome. Um, and we're happy to have all you guys here, chat. Um, so, Austin, where are you at nowadays? I live in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm in uh, the South Baltimore area. And I coach about 20 minutes north at the Johns Hopkins University. Very cool. Kira, you sit, are you in Kelowna right now or, or is that where is that where you live normally? Uh, no, it's just where my parents live and I was training down in Minnesota, but I came up here after like the program shut down for the year. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, cool. Um, so how are you guys handling quarantine right now? No, no, I assume that you guys uh, are all kind of dealing with the same problems that the, uh, the rest of chat's dealing with, right? Mm hmm. Not being able to swim has been tough. I was actually tapering for a meet. I was going to go to Eastern sectionals in Buffalo and then they canceled the meet uh, oh. like a week, like a week before. So figuring out how to stay in shape without swimming has been one of the main challenges right now that I've been uh, tackling, taking mm -hmm. on. Kiara, what about you? Yeah, exactly the same. Uh, we had Olympic trials this weekend they canceled it, I think, two, a week ago or two weeks ago. And yeah, just like trying to stay fit without a like long course pool or even a 25 meter pool has been, I mean, a challenge. But I did hear something helpful that was like at the end of this, just try and be fitter than if you did nothing, which is like you don't have to be at like peak performance or in your best shape or like any of that, but just as long as you did something every day that you'll be in a pretty good spot. And that's like given me a lot of mental ease. Yeah. Well, and routine, that's, that's such a great point. Really important. Yeah. Routine is yeah. hugely yeah. important. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we get this a lot in chat, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, this is so sad. And I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And while it is sad and while it is going to be tough to get through this, the people who are able to, really look at this period of time as an opportunity to create an advantage for themselves are the ones that are going to be 
the leaders of the pack, the leaders of their teams after all this stuff goes away. Because it will eventually go away. Like this is a finite thing. This isn't something that's going to last forever. And the people who are able to look at it and say, okay, how can I get better in this time? And a lot of you guys chat, like the people who are here, you guys already are at an advantage over everybody else who's just sitting there at home, twiddling their thumbs, feeling bad. Let's go ahead and get started. I, I guess, you know, before we get started with the uh, the slideshows and any videos, can you tell us a little bit about sort of your your journey as a breaststroker? I guess, Kira, we'll start with you because breaststroke's kind of like your main stroke. Um, you know, what's your journey been like as a breaststroker? Was it always your, your best stroke? And, you know, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced over the course of, of your career specific to breaststroke? Okay, yeah, um, it wasn't always my best stroke. I got my first like time standard for AA provincials, which is the thing we have here in the 400 freestyle. And then I think I made triple A's in the 50 free. And so I was kind of into that. And then I thought I was like a 200 flyer because I was tough and I was into that. And it, as I got older, I, um, my breaststroke improved faster than any of my other strokes, but I for sure swam all the races through high school. Um, even like I would like do an 800 every year, I do a 1500, I do a two back. So, um, I like still trained everything, raced everything all through high school. And it wasn't really till college where I really not like specialized, but like kind of cut out the extra races. Um, and that's such an important point, though. Like you, you say that. So you didn't you didn't specialize in breaststroke until you got to college. Is that right? Yeah, like I for sure knew it was my strongest stroke, but I trained it like as equally as I did all the other ones. Yeah. And sure. it's something that I get asked about a lot. And I'm sure, Austin, you've experienced this, too. You know, we get younger swimmers where, you know, they say, well, when should I start to specialize? Like when you know, when should I just be doing the 200 breaststroke? When should I just be doing whatever event it is? And I think it's so important that, you know, especially the younger swimmers out there really try to um, broaden their horizons and swim a variety of different things. Because think about it in terms of being a college swimming coach. If I'm if I'm a college coach and I have some holes to fill, because this is another interesting point, and I'm only thinking about this because we just had a college recruiting webinar earlier this earlier today. Um, you know, there's there's like a rotating door in college teams when a certain class graduates. Those, those swimmers are going to vacate certain events that that coach was having them do. So if you just swim one event, then chances aren't very good that you're going to fill one of those. So it's better to stay, stay broad. So uh, I think that's a great point. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, no, not at all. It even like extends past college now looking at like the ISL season. Like those teams want someone who can swim more than one thing or mm -hmm. if they can like a whole range like 50 to 200 or you know so that's gonna help you for a long long time if you can like keep touch with all the strokes and all the distances for sure don't like pigeonhole yourself too sure. early um so yeah then i went to i stayed in my hometown until i was 18 i graduated high school then i went down to the states um to the university of minnesota and i was there for six years and i went to a pro team in toronto high performance center in Canada. And I was there for a year and a half. And then I was back in Minnesota for a few months this year before coming back to Kelowna. So I've jumped around, I guess, a little bit. No, that's good. And I think it's given you a, a wide range of, of different experiences with a lot of different coaches. So Austin, yeah. tell us a little bit about your background as a breaststroker or, or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Before I do, it should be noted for people in the chat, Minnesota um, has an excellent tradition of breaststroke and here is the latest in that line. I remember when I was in college, Aww. um, Jillian Tyler and Haley Spencer would be duking it out and they were the great breaststrokers from earlier in the decade. And now it's yourself and a couple other people in your group. So I, think, yeah. I always wondered what you guys were doing up in Minnesota to make you so good at breaststroke. And I wanted to figure <laughs> it out for myself. And that's because getting back to me, I grew up not being very good at breaststroke. I was an IMer, and I came from a very good program, the North Baltimore Aquatic Club, uh, that trained a lot of great IMers like Michael Phelps, um, Katie Hoff, Ch Chase Kalish, who was a uh, 2016 Olympian in the 400 IM. So I had great IM training, and my weakest stroke was breaststroke, and it was such a pain. You know, I'd always be out really fast, and Tyler, you know this feeling at the 200 be a body length ahead of everybody I'm racing. And then it was like, they got out of fishing. Just get reeled in, yeah. <laughs> just start reeling me in on breaststroke, yeah. 
so <laughs> I was still pretty good, pretty talented. So I was, I was good at the IM in high school in spite of that. And I was recruited to University of Texas. Um, we thought at the time we thought we were the best college team in the country. Obviously, others would disagree. That's just how we felt. And when I got there, we had probably the best breaststroke group in the country as well. Um, we had Olympian Brendan Hansen, uh, Olympian Scott Spann, who was a former teammate of who yours. You Michigan stole Tyler. from Michigan. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Nick Dinicenzo, who was one of the best timers in the mm-hmm. country out of high school and was top three in the 200 breaststroke at NCAAs, and Eric Friedland, uh, who was an NCAA champion in breaststroke. So I had all of these people around me that were competing for Olympic team spots, national finals, NCAA championships, and breaststroke. And when I started learning from them, that helped my take my breaststroke to the next level. And since that was the stroke that I had the most room to improve in, that took my IM to a whole nother level. So the, the mindset change that I made, and this is something that a lot of people should really think about. And it, Tyler, you mentioned it while we're going through this whole quarantine thing, is framing something that might not be as good as you want it to be as an opportunity, right? So I was already a really good IMer with a with a breaststroke that wasn't where it needed to be yet, which means any improvements in breaststroke was gonna take me that much farther than the IM as opposed to getting like this much better at backstroke because backstroke was my best event, right? Um, I might get this much better in the IM because I got that much better at backstroke, but getting better at my breaststroke was gonna take me this far And I actually saw those changes right away. Uh, My freshman year, I won the NCAAs in the 200 IM. A large part of that was because I dropped three seconds off my breaststroke split (laughs) off of my senior year of high school. Wow. Yeah, it was a big, it was a big drop off of my senior year of high school time in, uh, in the IM. That summer, I made my first World University Games team in the 200 IM, which is the best college kids around the country representing the United States. And most of that was because of the improvements I made in breaststroke. And so all throughout college, I became this student of breaststroke, constantly talking to the guys around me about what they thought. Obviously my coach, Eddie Reese, coached a lot of great breaststrokers. So I was always asking his opinion, staying after practice, doing video work to do a couple 25s of technique. And it actually took me to the point where by um, my senior year, I was actually on, I was actually the breaststroker on our medley relay um for a couple meets and i was almost our breaststroker at ncas but my teammate dax hill beat me out at our conference meet but i went from <laughs> breaststroke being my worst stroke to being someone that texas would use on the medley relay in breaststroke by the time i was a senior and all of that was from seeing it as an opportunity uh becoming a student of breaststroke and uh just picking other people's brains about what they do to get better. And so now today, I actually coach our breaststroke group at the Johns Hopkins University. I run four or five breaststroke sets a week. And um, it's my favorite thing to coach just because I put so much effort into learning it when I was in college because I wasn't naturally good at it. Right, Uh, right. So that's kind of my journey with breaststroke and my perspective on it. So me and Kira have very different backgrounds in breaststroke. And I think everybody watching today you're going to see kind of two sides of a coin when we present something and how we think about things. And that should give you a wide range, just on a thing, even on a single topic, a wide range of perspective on each thing. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's, and that's such a great way to look at it. And um, before we get into the slideshow chat, if you guys notice that, uh, that any, anything's freezing or um, audio gets a little bit weird, there's a button right up at the top of your screen. Um, it's a little red button that says reconnect. If you have any issues, press reconnect. It'll bring you right back and it'll solve most problems. So um, obviously we've got people here from all over the world. Um, Not everybody has the greatest connection or there might be a lot of servers in between us and you. If you have any issues, just press reconnect up at the top of the screen. So uh, guys, let's just get right into it. And uh, I'm gonna start our uh, slideshow presentation and let's just get it rolling. Hold on a moment. Make sure that we're out of the way so everybody yeah, can you see. Yeah, got too. Yeah. So <laughs> you want, to, want to see that beautiful picture with the, the – and these are both, by the way, chat, these are both pictures from Fitter and Faster. That, that picture right there with, with Austin off to the left is from 
uh, from a fitter faster clinic. And um, I believe the picture of Kier is uh, during the period of time before every one of our sessions where you actually get to take a picture with us. So um, that, happy that, that you guys picture, added those pics. That picture was fr from a clinic I did in Iowa. So shout out to everybody that's watching from <laughs> Iowa right now. That was a very fun clinic for me. Hey, oh, Iowans. Uh, but all right, guys, let's let's get right into it. I'm going to stop flapping my gums and uh, we want to hear hear your experience and your expertise. Here we go. OK. OK, so I'm going to. Yeah, I'll start talking. Um, so with breaststroke, everybody's is going to be uh, very different or mine's very different. And everyone's is going to be a little bit different. So everyone has different variations of how they recover um how they kick where their body is their like levels in the water it's a little bit different for everybody their timing's different and so that's why breaststroke is so interesting and why austin's conversations with his teammates when he was learning were probably so interesting just because everyone has something different that they focus on or something that they think about and so um while i'm like talking today and while austin's talking today i really want to emphasize like these are the key parts of breaststroke are going to be your head position and your hip position. And then also like, obviously you're kicking your pull, which are the two things that are going to be, you're going to be like using to move forward. But um, everything else are things that will work for us and things that we've learned. And so just like be open, try them, bring them to your coaches, talk about it. And just like, see if like, if it works for you, if it's fast, if it feels good, then build off of it. And that's um, kind of how I treat breaststroke is I, will oh i can press next on the slides um is that i'll go to the pool and we'll time it we'll measure it we'll do a 25 it'll work or it doesn't work and if it works then i'll try and make that point stronger so if i'm going to pull a little bit deeper or like point my toes at the end or start my kick higher up like all those things like i'll try it and it's often it won't work but sometimes it does and then that's just something that i'll keep building off of and that's kind of how i my coach and i built my breaststroke since i was 14 years old and i was in his club so um, all right, I guess the next slide. Oh, nice image. Okay. So do you want to start talking for the kick, Austin? I don't know. Sure. So there's a okay. four main concepts for kicking, no matter who you are. And by the way, like Kira said, everyone's breaststroke is unique. Uh, it's the weirdest stroke, <laughs> which is why I had such a tough time with it. It almost looks like a different sport, but these four <laughs> things are things that everyone can do, no matter how their breaststroke looks. So number one, on your kick recovery, you want to bring your ankles to your butt, and you do that by bending your knees, okay? One of the things you want to focus on doing when you bring your ankles to your butt, bringing your kick up like that, is keeping your legs flat along the surface, parallel to the surface of the water, and not necessarily swinging your knees forward under the water. What that does is it creates friction in the water, and it's like pumping the brakes on your stroke. So you want to bend your knees and bring your ankles up to your butt when you do your kick, as you can see on the image, the left person in that little image that we put in right there. Um, number two, when it's time to start to start your kick, you want to turn your uh, ankles and your feet outward like this. And the reason that you turn your feet outward like that is because you're starting to grab water and start and uh, when you grab that water, you're starting to push it backwards. That's how the kick makes you go, okay? Um, you do this by, I don't know, can you help me with this one a little bit, Kira? How we turn, we're turning our hips yeah. out, we're turning our ankles out a little bit when we start our kick and starting to catch water. Yeah, so once your, once your feet are up to your butt, then you're gonna want, instead of thinking about like, like, opening your knees up and trying to catch all that water just think about catching water with your big toes is what i like to think about so just mm. like getting those reaching out as far as you can try to think of like getting those to either sides of the pool and then pushing backwards with those so i just try to think about my toes at that point for most of my kick but at that point in my kick and i think oftentimes that's where um you can prevent a lot of injury or if you're are experiencing knee pain you can go back and just see like what your knee position is after this point if you're going to start kicking outwards you're going to use a lot of muscles that you uh, aren't, won't necessarily help you as much as keeping your knees close together and just what and just um pointing your toes outwards 
It's also it's also allows for a faster tempo, right, Kara? If you're not swinging your legs out and around every single time, you want to keep them compact, keep your knees together, and kick them out, kick them back, bring them back up, kick them back. Um, let's talk for a second for about a tempo. Let's talk for a yeah. second about how important it is to um, to finish your kick because if you if you look at a lot of other strokes, you have a lot of time and a lot of distance in which you can actually push back on the water. And a lot of swimmers will sort of bring their feet out to here and then they'll just start the next kick. Whereas if you can just get just a little bit more of a flick and you can get your feet together, that can increase the amount of time that you're actually pushing on the water by like five to 10%, which is a really big deal. You wanna talk about that for a second? Yes, ahead, I do. Yeah. Can I go? Okay. So, um, <laughs> sorry, okay. So once your feet are here, a good way that I like to think about it is like at the very end of your kick. So there, that's like pure gold at the end. That's where you're going to get the most out of, out of your whole kick. So up here, say this is like, like 30% is going to help you. And then it's like a little bit more at the end. And then you're going to get the most at the very end of that kick because that's when your body's going to be fully extended. You're out in streamline, your head's in the right position, your hips are the right position. You're going forward at that point. And if that's when you make sure that you snap those toes together, that's when you're going to get the most distance out of your kick. And so I think that's the fastest position you're going to be in. And so to keep getting that last little bit out, that's like absolutely key with the kick. Um, and so, and then also, yeah, Austin's right. If you're not coming way out, that helps with your tempo because then you can recover quickly and then get right back to it. Um, did you want to add anything to that? I do. If you leave your hands or your feet, can you just hold your feet like this for a sec, Kira? So say you finish your kick and you're stuck right here. So extend your arms and leave your hands like this, Kira. You're still dragging this part of your feet through the water, right? That's creating drag if you leave your, heat, if you're, you leave your feet turned out like this. Breaststroke is just being in a perfect body line and then coming back up and generating as much power as you can back into that body line, okay? So the two pieces of breaststroke are, number one, the power you're generating. So that's from your pull and your kick. And number two, how good can you make your body line? And the fastest piece of doing that is by fully extending your feet, pointing your toes and clapping them together, okay? Because you're maximizing your body line and your efficiency and you can use your power that you generate from your kick and from your pull, which we'll go over later as best you can. So make sure yeah. you snap those toes and finish that kick. It's super important. Yeah, I really like that. That breaststroke is just like, like loading back up and then springing forward. I like that like image a yeah. lot for sure for breaststroke. Yeah, and we'll go okay. over later. It's why it's important to think about that in terms of going from your body line back to your body line with as little drag inefficiency um, and bad body position as possible. Because there's a lot of things that can go wrong between here, getting from here back to here again. Oh wait, Tyler, can we play the video now? Which one do you want? Um, the one that I just put on YouTube. Okay. Here we go. Uh, guys in chat, if if this uh, video is a little bit loud for you, just go ahead and use the volume controls on your computer to keep it from getting too terribly loud. Sometimes these videos can be a little loud, just FYI. Nice talk. Oh, okay. So what I want you guys to look at is my kick. And, oh, the music. Okay, I want you guys to see the kick and how far or how much my knees are bending and my feet are almost right up to my hips. Right, so it was a very narrow kick, but what was um, what I'm most proud of about it is just how I take the time to make sure that those knees, like they bend a lot. Like it's not like a little kick; it's like a real, it's a very big kick. And then once I'm ready to shoot forward, that's when my legs grab onto that water and push me backwards. Very good. Let's go back to the and slides. Just a, just a heads up, Tyler. I'm gonna want to come back to that video. Everybody who, who's in there, that was Kira swimming, by the way. That is. That is Kira actually demonstrating all the cool things that we're going to talk about today. So Tyler, I'm going to want to come back to that at some point. Okay. The Kiera, the one and only. Happy to play that video again. Because <laughs> that is a you. beautiful breaststroke. And I'll give you guys multiple opportunities to look at it and talk about different things that Kira does really, really well. Okay. Did you want, I'll talk Go about ahead. the ball. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, so with the pull, the first thing that you wanna focus on is when you're coming forward, the first thing you're gonna do is turn those thumbs down. So that's gonna get you ready for that out sweep and making sure that you're not just dragging your hands outward. So you wanna start with those thumbs down and pull out. And then you want your hands to be, I like to go a little bit past my shoulders, but again, I still practice this today. I'll do skulls here and do a little pull. I'll do medium skulls, medium pull, and I'll do big skulls and a big pull and just kind of see like what feels right with my strength, my effort and not everything. And usually I'll end up at a pull that's just a little bit past my shoulders. And that's when I'm gonna be at my best. Once I'm out here, I knew I'd end up demonstrating breaststroke on the slope cap. <laughs> <laughs> Better you than me. Okay. Once I'm here, that's when I'm gonna want to. I either it's one of two images that'll help me, and I kind of play with that on the day. From here, I'll either think about pulling my hips forward up to where my hands are, or I'll think about having like a ball here, and I'll think about trying to pop that. So you really have to squeeze mm -hmm. down and try and squeeze that ball. And so, um, I'll but I'll stay with the hip one. So I'll try and think about like, once my hands are w wide here, my head position is still the same. So I haven't moved my head yet as I'm extending my arms. Once I'm here, my head won't move. I want all the movement to come about thinking about moving my hip line and then through my feet and legs, like moving that whole body forward up to where my hands are. And then you're gonna be ready to recover at that point. So I don't, can I go back to the PowerPoint? Yeah, Kira, so a question Thank about you. that. So a way to think about it is what you're saying is our head doesn't move. What's actually lifting you out of the water and makes it look like your head is moving. It, that motion actually starts in your hips and they're actually lifting you up out of the water, correct? Yeah, correct. It starts at your hips. You have to engage core and keep that engaged pretty much the whole time. You can't relax that. And often when, and it happens to me too, if you like go and look up a video, you'd be like, well, it looks really vertical. That's when I'm lifting my head. So when I start to like try and engage a breath or at the end of a race, if I lift my head up, then that's when I start to get a little bit too vertical and then try and get down. But if I keep my head in that same position, then all the movements coming from like my core muscles, my back core, back core, and like, um, no, your back and just core like your you, core. <laughs> my back core, and using the water to try and move forward instead of like trying to get like my head up to try and breathe, try and keep that head in that same position. So try and pull up. And then once you're here and ready to recover, this is like Austin said before, like that's where you get that power to get into that kick. So now here, like your ankles are gonna start recovering and getting ready to shoot backwards. Your hands are gonna be up. And this is when you wanna shoot forwards and recover everything and get into that perfect position to get into the water to help you use it to get back into your next stroke. That last point is my favorite thing to teach to the Hopkins kids. And I'll go over how to work on that when we each go over our specific drills that we want you guys to take away from this. Um, hand speed coming out of your pole, in my opinion, and this is just from my own experience, is the most important part of breaststroke to focus on. And I guess the better way to frame it is it's the most neglected part of a lot of people's breaststrokes. Uh, and so the way I want you guys to think about this is, when you're at the top of your stroke, your hands are up, your feet are cocked back, right? You're creating all this drag. You're like this big ball in the water right now. You're not generating any speed, okay? All you're doing is cruising on your last kick and the end of your pull, okay? So if you get stuck here at the top of your stroke in this bent upwards body position, you're going to go straight down to the bottom. And just from my own experience, that's what happened to me when I was younger is my hands were super slow. I would literally go like this coming out of my breaststroke. And when I got tired, it would make me sink lower and lower and lower and lower in the water. So if you tie it back to what I said, which is breaststroke is just getting back to that body position every single time. When you're at the slowest part of your stroke, your job is to get to that body line as quickly and efficiently as possible. So number one is having a strong kick and snapping your feet into that, into that line at the end and that point. And number two is getting your hands forward and shooting them across the water as quickly as you can. And we do a lot of work at Johns Hopkins with our breaststroke group on hand speed, shooting forward, um, getting across the water as quickly as possible. And I've got a really cool video later uh, where it, I can show you just how important hand speed is at the end of a race when you're really, really tired. It's probably the most important thing to stay on top of at the end of a race. So Tyler, if you could pull up that video of Kira again, I want, I want everyone to specifically watch your hands and how fast they move. 
um, even when she's just moving through this little pool. So is that is that a pool that's near you? Is that where you train when you're- No, that's Pinecrest in Florida. Wow, oh, okay, gotcha. Honestly, I, I don't mind hearing blank face every time we do this too. <laughs> so you see how quickly, up and shoot, up and shoot, up and shoot, okay? She's not spending any extra time at the top of that stroke. She's getting back to that perfect body line every single time as quickly as she can. That's super important. Okay, go ahead. You can go to the next slide, Kara. Yeah, no, that's like for sure. Like, I like that too. Um, and yeah, I think that like, I think for every single slide here, that's gonna be a big thing is like using that power once you're here to try and get everything to help you go forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so head position. Um, you want your eyes to always be facing down. So you never want to be looking forward at the wall. That's not going to, it's not going to help you to have your neck cranked up. It's just going to lock up your lower back. It's going to disengage your core. So if you can keep your head in this like tucked position, just breathe like that, that will help you trying to go forward because it'll keep everything like tight and engaged and ready to like shoot yourself forward. It'll keep your lower back loose, which will help you get into that position too, which will help you um, with your kick when you're finishing that, it'll help you transfer the speed all the way up to your head. So don't lift at your neck. Um, you need to keep your core engaged to breathe. Now, if you can think of once you get going and say you're like on the third, fifth, you have a tuna breast and you're like, okay, like arms totally checked out, been using those for hundred meters, legs are starting to get tired. You have to start and rely on just like your momentum and try and using the water. I try to think of my head as a weight. Mm. I try to use that as like the key point going forward. So that's, it's like very similar to thinking of trying to shoot your hands forward, but I try to think of it as like my hands will go forward because I'm trying to think of getting my head into the same like part where my hands are going. So I try to get my head to dive in there. And then I'd want my like back hips to like go in that same movement. So I want to try and think like from here, you can think of if you like shoot forwards, you're going to have to have your core engaged. You're going to get those hips up. You're going to finish your kick. That's the perfect body position to go in. And then if you think about when you hold a kickboard in the water and it flies up, we've all done that. And you pull the kickboard down, that's kind of where you want. So then your head's gonna come down. If you keep those hands on the surface, we didn't really say, you never want your hands to dive downwards. You always want those to go straight towards the wall, straight mm -hmm. in that line. So if your hands are going that way and then you start that opening, if your body's still going down, that core is engaged, you have so much room up here to pull yourself back up and that's going to keep that if you've ever watched like artistic gymnastics with that ribbon if you have that image in your head that often helps me too if you just want to think about like skipping through the water like a dolphin or like a rock but you just want to like use the water to help you go faster and thinking about your head position and keeping that chin tucked and not raising it up that's going to help you a lot to keep that body line um yeah did you want to add anything yeah it's pretty simple guys your head goes up your whole body goes down and you start plowing the water like a snow plow. And snow plows are not very fast. The whole point of a snow plow is to create as much friction as you possibly can uh, to clear snow off a street. And breaststroke, you wanna create as little friction as you possibly can, okay? So keep your head in line, that'll get your hips in line and it'll create a perfect body line to efficiently move you through the water like we talked about with your kick. Okay, so we've gone over in terms of our body line and the efficiency of our stroke, snapping your feet together, pointing, your pointing them at the end, okay? We've talked about shooting your hands forward and Kira just mentioned pointing them at the wall and not pointing your hands down when you swim breaststroke, okay? You want stroke because that maximizes the power you get from your kick and your pull. And that starts yeah. with your head because you're, you're, the rest of your body will, will follow what your head does. Yes, 100%, 100%. Okay, hip position. Okay, so I added hip position in here because sometimes if I'm feeling stuck and I'm like, all right, like I've checked my arms, I've checked my legs, like they're working, I'm like trying to use my head. Like if I've checked all the boxes then I'm like, all right, like what are my hips doing? And I try to think like when I'm in this pulling spot, once I've widened my arms, then I want to think of opening my hips up to come towards my hands and when you're doing that and when you're opening up your hips like that that also allows your heels to come up to your butt to and like start that kicking phase without dropping your knees down like mm. um austin said about the friction so if you're opening up your hips like think about opening up your hips that's going to allow you to get up to breathe 
without cranking your neck open. It's gonna, if you drag your hips farther up through the water, you're gonna be high up on the surface there. And then, yeah, it gives you a lot of room to bring those heels up really, really quickly to start. And then once you're here, I want you to really think about like engaging your core a little bit extra and snapping forward. And that's with that head momentum, that kick going backwards and snapping. And then I want you to think about trying to get those hips like out of the water, like try and get like, like some, like not like, like diving, but like you want like your butt to come out of the water, like your hips to come out of the water when you're recovering that stroke. So you really want to engage that core and try and get like into that position so you can start that rebound from the water to come back up and try and instead of fighting the water, because breaststroke, there is a lot of um, water that you have to push through, try and work with it and try and make it as easy as possible so you can get through a 200 breaststroke without, you know, like killing yourself. Uh, everything you just said, Kira, sets us up perfectly to go over this video. Um, Tyler, if you could queue up the Scott Wells video from the 2012 Olympic trials, we're going to watch a video and I'm not going to take you guys through the whole race. I'm just going to show you enough footage to make our point. Scott Welts was the 2012. Less than a second and uh, a half USA, separates uh, the top seven swimmers. In the, of the Olympic. And he has the best hit position. I've ever the top seen two to touch the wall and so represent to the, the, the U.S. and London. Hanson up there. I think it's Expect him to start making this move right oh, about now. Yeah. Heading into this 150. Yeah, it's Hanson. Bird first 100 turn. Yeah, and there's okay. Burkle sneaking up on Hanson. Burkle's in lane well. four just below Hanson. The and then you've got Chateau in lane right five. Now. They are the top three the as they hit the halfway right mark. It is Burkle three. now over Hanson and then and Chateau running third still. Well, I was Every talking to head coach Dave Salo, the coach who coaches there at Chateau, and he says he's feeling really confident now. Got that monkey off his back and making that 100 breaststroke. You see him right there in front. I really expect him to start making this move right about now, heading into this 150. It's Hanson, Burgle, and Chanto lined up across the middle of the pool. Hanson in lane three does not have the lead anymore, and it looks like Chanto's going to have the lead as they hit the final 50. Chanto in the lead, followed by Welts. Burgle was third, and Hanson had faded to fourth. Watch Welts, Dan. Watch Welts. He's right there. He was out really slow, but he didn't let the field get away from him. His hips are popping up every single Three, time. Three, four swimmers bunched Look up as they hit the for the final the 20 meters. While everyone else is plowing the water. I Welts think Welts has six. a little bit of advantage. So much Scott Welts in lane six right has moved but ahead of the pack. Away, he's the most up above him is Chanto running flat. second. Hanson up there in lane three time. trying to Good. stretch. It's going to be Welts. All right, that's good. Sorry I was talking to video over the video, everybody. Um... But you can see his name right there on the slide. Write down that name, Scott Welts, and watch that video again on your own time and just see how crazy his hip movement is back and forth. Okay, so it's propelling him forward and then getting him into a perfect body line every single time. Um, and while other people slowly fall away in a race because they're hitting the water with low hips, his high hips are allowing him to get forward, get forward, get forward, use the power of his kick and his pull every time. So it's a good way to think about things. I love that. That was so good. I love that. That's okay. my favorite breaststroke. It's one of my favorite races to watch because that guy just crushes everybody. I'm for sure going to go, yeah, look up more videos of that. Okay. Okay. So here's some drills that um, I like to do to help set up my breaststroke. So one that I've really been into lately is um, kick with a board on my chest. So I'll just have my snorkel on. I'll have my kickboard right here and I'll hold it. Otherwise it'll go away. So I'll probably go like cross armed and then I'll just kick and I'll just try and think about having the kickboard help me. So when I kick, I'm going to push down on my chest and then I want to like feel how with that extra buoyancy, how the water can help me come back up. And then that just like gets me kind of like acquainted with the water, ready to go. So that's like a really good set to like start off a practice is I'll just take like a 25 or two just to like, have that kickboard on my chest and just do like a kick. And then I might do like, like three easy kicks and then like fast the rest of the way. And just like, like work on like working with the water there and having the water push you back up to the surface and getting comfortable with that and comfortable, like trusting that if you like push down, the water will push you back up. And that's a really like finite skill to have for breaststroke and to try and kind of master that. The other one that I've been doing lately, and this is because like, 
for the past few months, I've really, really struggled with my breaststroke technique and trying to get even like back to where I was in that video. And so I've really been looking at like how much I'm bending my knees or like my kit and everything. And now with like this pause, I'm, I've taken a hundred steps back and I'm going back to these drills. And these are what I'm doing every day right now. I have just a, like a backyard 10 meter pool and I'm doing this kickboard on my chest just to get used to the water. And then I started doing like swimming with your left arm and your right leg. And I noticed that like that one, my left arm and my right leg are like a lot weaker than my right arm and my left leg. So right now I'm doing like, I'll do two pulls, left arm, right leg, one pull, right arm, left leg. And just getting comfortable like with my left arm pulling water and like thinking about what I want this hand to do. So while like I'm out here and I say like, pull your hips forward, my left hand wasn't really doing a lot of that. It was mostly like, like a lot of my right arm was doing that and like maybe my body position pulling myself up in the water, but my left hand wasn't helping me as much as it could have. So right now I've just like focused on using my left arm more. And like when I feed my dog treats, I'll use my left hand just to get like used to like using this arm. And that's just kind of how I'm trying to fill in that gap during this time period. It's just the smallest thing, but I think that it's like, a useful small thing that I could be doing right now. And so just like trying to like recognize the gaps that you have in your strokes right now. And if it's like just breaststroke as a whole for you guys, just like showing up here, like something that can just help you during this time. Um, casting drill. I learned this one at a fitter faster clinic. So I didn't come up with this, but a hundred percent love it. So you'll be, I do it without a snorkel, but I have, I think it could be taught with a snorkel. So you'll be lying face down in the water. You're going to load up your legs and your arms. I'm going to stand. Thank you. Oh, full screen. Okay. So you're going to be, to you. <laughs> yes, Kelowna. Um, okay. So you're going to be laying out in the water. You're going to have your hands right up to your back here. And then with your legs, <laughs> was it gonna do? This? you're going to recover your legs for your kick. And then once you're fully here, you're going to snap your arms forward and snap those legs backwards. So when you do that, it's going to, that's just like the movement that you want with those fast hands that Austin and I were talking about. That's the momentum that you want. So you're going to try and get the momentum from your hand snapping forward. What I like to think about is these little hands as like five pound weights behind you. And then think about throwing those forward. So like if you're fishing like a casting drill, trying to get that to the other side of the pool, you don't want your hands to dip down into the water. You want them to go onto the water surface and have that momentum, carry your hips forward, and then your kick carry the whole thing forward. So it's really gonna have you get the most out of your kick and the most out of like transfer that speed through your hips and all the way to your fingertips if you're doing this drill properly. Mm. So I like that one. Do you have any questions about that or was that like a fine explanation? That was really good. Okay. And then three, three, three drill. I talked about this a little bit, a little bit earlier, just like setting up my stroke at the beginning right now. I will do just like three skull, small skulls and then I'll do medium skulls a little bit deeper and then three large skulls and then I'll do three breaststroke pulls and then I'll start the three breaststroke pulls. I'll do three like small breaststroke pulls to mimic the small skull and then I'll start from the top and do three skulls, small skulls, three medium skulls, three large skulls and then I'll do three medium breaststroke strokes. So with the medium stroke and then back to the top, I'll do three small, three medium, three large. It'll be deeper and wider. And then I'll do my three breaststroke pulls and mm -hmm. I'll just see which one is like the most efficient for me. And yeah, it's mostly like mostly an efficiency drill. And if like, sometimes it's like a mix between the medium and large, but just, it's also just like warming up all those arm muscles and yeah, just seeing like if it's really worth pulling all that extra water, but and most of the times it does help me and just realizing that like it might feel slower, but like you're getting more distance per stroke. It's more efficient if you're pulling properly. So those are my current favorite drills. So my drills, um, and this is something I actually run with the Hopkins kids. I'm going to take you guys through this, dr these drills, and then we'll open up the chat and have a Q&A session at the end, I believe, and Tyler will take us through that. So stick around for a couple more minutes, and then we'll all uh, hang out and chat and talk about some stuff. So the dolphin pull progression, dolphin pull is just breaststroke with butterfly kick, okay? And at Johns Hopkins, I have the kids for each breaststroke pull they only get one butterfly kick when their hands shoot forward okay and the reason that we do dolphin pull is to work on the two most important parts of breaststroke in my opinion and we've covered it already number one is your hand speed shooting forward 
okay? And number two is um, the movement of your hips. Kira's talked a lot about her hips, moving her body forward and backward instead of lifting her head up, okay? So I do these drills with, every, with our kids to really help them dial up their hand speed and their hip speed as much as possible. So Tyler, if you could play the dolphin pole video, I think it's just someone swimming dolphin pole to give an idea of what dolphin pole is before I say anything. This is dolphin pole breaststroke. And if you'll notice, it doesn't look that much different than Scott Welch winning the 200 breaststroke at the Olympic trials in that last video. Okay, hips are barely getting out of the water just like Scott Welch was doing. And if you swim breaststroke, all you're going to be doing is doing your kick, breaststroke kick, instead of butterfly leg. Okay? Thank you, Tyler. And then, so the way to think about breaststroke from your shoulders to your hips is you're doing the same thing that you'd be doing in butterfly. Your shoulders, from your shoulders to your hips, you, breaststroke is butterfly. Okay? So the first drill in the progression is called mini dolphin pull. And that's where you keep your hands really small and you take really tiny strokes, okay, to get your tempo up and just feel the movement of your hips and the speed of your hands moving through the water. I found a, a lot of people have a problem with pulling too wide in breaststroke, and that leads to slower tempo. It leads them to get stuck at the top of their stroke. And I encourage our Hopkins swimmers to keep their hands in, and their arms in front of their bodies when they swim breaststroke instead of getting their elbows stuck behind them when they come up with their pull. So mini breaststroke allows them to work on picking up their tempo and keeping their hands in front of their body. And I'll notice when I do, I do this a lot at my clinics that I run with, and some of you in the chat, I think, uh, have been at one of our clinics before um, and with the Hopkins kids. I'll notice when I tell them to do mini dolphin pull, it'll just look like good breaststroke. Um, the second <laughs> is I'll have them do dolphin pull just like the video, but with their fists only. And that gives everybody awareness of their arms being a part of the pole instead of just their hands. Then we go to regular dolphin pole. Then we go to breaststroke with flutter kick, which is like expert level dolphin pole. Because when you're doing flutter kick, it's really hard to balance at the top of your stroke. And if you get stuck at the top of your stroke and you don't have an efficient up and through with fast hands, then you're just going to sink and you'll actually choke on water a little bit. So it's really important to have efficient an efficient pole in breaststroke with flutter kick and then to finally put it all together and by the way these are each a 25 in a progression the final 25 i'll have them do two pulls with dolphin kick two pulls with breaststroke kick two two and what i want them to feel is there should be no difference between the butterfly kick and the breaststroke kick between their shoulders and their hips so if you're taking a butterfly kick or you're taking a breaststroke kick from your shoulders to your hips, your torso is moving the same way. And that transitions into us swimming some actual breaststroke when we do our, our longer breaststroke sets. I'll have them do this progression in warm up so that they feel the hand speed and feel the hip movement. Um, so before we wrap up the uh, the nuts and bolts part of this presentation, Tyler, can you queue up the uh, that last video? Um, uh, let's actually... Swimming? Yeah, uh, the last one of Kiera swimming. Okay, um, I was about to say yeah, the press you, with water. You just kick. have to show. Go ahead. Oh, it's it's okay. Uh, it's more important because I I want to make I want to make like a cool proclamation here. Um, this is Kira <sighs> oh. at the Pan Am. Very and Tyler, good you can just go to the, the end of the race. That's shot of Mike the Maybe like the last the twenty-five meters or so. So Kira's hand speed, she's the one winning right now. Look how fast her hands are still moving. Look how much her hips are moving. Head is still in perfect position. And she's going to win this race because her hand speed and her hip position are better than the person next to her. Look how she dove in her finish. Perfect hand speed, shooting forward, perfect body position every single time. Okay? It's very, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome to watch that. that. But that's that's so awesome to watch because in and I'm I honestly I'm learning a lot right now. Breaststroke is by far and away my worst stroke, and that was something I really struggled with. And one of the last drills that you um, that you called out right there, Austin, was the breaststroke with flutter kick. And it's so important for people that are going to do that drill to keep in mind that like the biggest thing that that drill works on is that shoot forward with the hands. Like that's by far and away the most important part of that drill. And the people who are just gonna start doing that, that's the first and foremost thing that you should focus on. And secondarily, 
it's not just about shooting the hands really fast out ahead of yourself. It's also about using that head, that weight to get down and in the line so that your hips can come up and over so you can show your butt to everybody up in the stands, just like Scott Wells does such a good job of. So, um, you know, really, really great stuff, guys. Um, I'm going to open up the, the chat really quick. By the way, once again, please don't spam. If you guys are, or if you guys spam, I'm going to ban you. It's that simple. Um, but please let us know what questions that you guys might have for, uh, for any, th any one of the three of us. We really want to um, help you guys get better in breaststroke here. So the first, first question that came through is how do you make your legs stop sinking? And I think we've kind of answered that, but let's, let's talk specifically to, um, you know, how to keep your, your, your head and your body from, from stopping to sink in the breaststroke. What should people be doing to help alleviate that problem? Coach? Well, pointing your toes, because if you point your, if you're focused on pointing your toes, then the whole rest of your leg will lock into position behind it without you even realizing it. And then the head position is important too. If your head's up, your butt's going to drop and your legs with it. So focusing on your toes, your hips and your head is enough. Just do those three things and your legs will stay up when you swim breaststroke. Well, um, can you guys talk briefly about pullouts? You know, we talked a lot about uh, the breaststroke as the stroke, but what uh, what specific advice, like maybe one or two pieces of advice might you have for the breaststroke pullout sequence? Kira? Okay, yeah, um, so for a breaststroke pullout, what I like to do is I start in the streamline and then I'll do my dolphin kick. And the dolphin kick, I try to make it as small as possible and it could, just to make it snappy and yeah, I just try to like like a quick snap and then once I start to feel that speed slow down at like right when it starts to slow down, I'll separate my hands and I think about like grab, like latching onto the water here. And then, okay, so like from that stand up there, I like think about holding on to something and then pulling my body up to where my hands were. So instead of like, just like rushing through it, I'll try and really think about like anchoring onto the water and then my body goes up to where my hands were from there. I like my hands to finish like on my thighs. So I like little tiny bird shoulders, okay, tiny bird shoulders, hands on the thighs. From here, I like to keep my elbows attached to my body and like sneak them up. So they're like right, right, right flat, like across you up here and then back into a streamline. And then you can start your first stroke from there. Um, but that's what I found works the best for me. What about you, Austin? Do you have any have any suggestions about like maybe staying really narrow in your pullout? Yeah, when your hands come up from being down on your legs all the way up to your point when you kick through to the surface, try to bring cross your arms. I'll, I guess I'll do this. When you bring <laughs> them up, cross your arms in front of you like this, as opposed to bringing them up like this, because this is drag. So keeping your hands as close to your body as possible when you're coming out of your pullout before you come forward is super important. Yeah, very good. Um, Kiera, I, I had a question specifically for you, and this is something I've noticed about your stroke. What's the idea behind you having your elbows so high on your recovery? You know, some people, there, there was a swimmer a long time, I think her name's Tara Kirk, and she, uh, she was really known for having her elbows out really high or elbows up really high. And in fact, there were a couple of times that she had gotten disqualified for having her elbows too high. Can you talk about why you bring your elbows up so high on your recovery? Um, it was just the way my stroke was built. Um, but Natural I born think that, stroker. yeah, I don't have like a super good reason why I do it or why I, but um, I think what happens is I think I'm just really high on the water generally when I swim breaststroke. And once I'm coming through here, I try and think about having like my top two fingers over the water and these two fingers under the water to shoot forward and to go towards that next wall. And from there, the rest of my body can kind of follow through with it. So yeah, for sure. Like, higher than a traditional breaststroke um it's just it's just what works for me and just because it works for me it's just because i've done it since i was 10 11 12 years old and i've just built off that and so that's why that's why if i changed it now it would just be like starting not from square one but from a, a, a disadvantage if i went to like what kids like what 
other 25 year olds right now have been doing for the last 15 years if i try to do what they were doing like that traditional breaststroke won't help me at this point and so that's why i think like once you go to college or like switch coaches like think about what your foundation was and try and like get stronger off of that and um that's also why i still do a two foot start not breaststroke related but because i've done it for so many years now for me to switch at this point like i'm good at the two foot start it's fast for me it was faster for me when i was 15 and when we measured it and so i made that stronger and um that's why i'm not changing at this point just because like when i was then like i chose it and i've made it stronger and like i'll still measure it once or twice a year just like to try it out and like from december to january this year i did a track start but it's just it's not beneficial and so i think just kind of like realizing that you don't have to like mimic what someone else is doing you just have to try and be open-minded and like see if it works for you very good awesome all right y'all um you know we're going to start wrapping up here you know austin kiera what what would be your one biggest tip for everybody that's stuck at home not able to swim right now what would be one of the best ways that they can ma make their breaststroke better during this time go ahead kiera okay um one of the best ways you can make your breaststroke better is doing body weight exercises so if you're just going to do like an at-home workout and i'm sure a lot of your clubs are running them um yeah just making sure that you're just keeping those like muscles strong and if you have any injuries like if you're it band sore making sure that you're rolling out right now and using this break to really make sure that you're ready to go once those pools open up um i know that like my knee's been bothering me for a while and so i've just been focusing on like rolling out my right leg and like yeah that's fine for maintenance throughout the year but this is such a good catch-up period to like like just relax everything and just like get rid of all those small little injuries right now and just be ready to go once it's time to. Very good. Austin, what about you? Watch the grades and take notes. Kira covered everything you can do with your body. So you should also be looking to improve your mind. Um, the best way to think about it, it might sound icky to a lot of people, but just approach swimming like you would approach your homework and maybe assign yourself to watch a couple videos and take notes on each one, um, you know, 20, 30 minutes a day. It doesn't even have to be that much. Awesome. Awesome. All right, y'all. Um, Austin, Kiara, thank you so much for being on today. You guys did a great job. Um, you know, this is one of those strokes that's a little bit weird, a little bit out there. There's a lot of people who, um, you know, would teach it in different ways. And I'm so happy we had two different people here to give a couple of different perspectives on the stroke. Again, you guys did a great job. Um, just to wrap up, everybody, um, you know, again, the replay video is going to be emailed to you directly in about two hours for your viewing pleasure. You can also find all the replays of our past webinars on our website at fitterandfaster.com forward slash replays. Also, don't forget to pay attention to Fitter and Faster's social accounts. You can find upcoming broadcasts that we're hosting at fitterandfaster.com forward slash live as well. We're going to be announcing more webinars later this week, and we encourage you to join us whenever a topic comes up that you're interested in. Um, somebody had a question about some of the upcoming webinars for later this week. We've, um, we've got a Breaking Down Butterfly webinar tomorrow. Um, we have two quarantine fitness workouts that are going to be happening on Thursday and Friday. We actually have a nutrition slash cooking class that's coming up on Thursday. And on Friday, I'm going to be doing a stroke video analysis webinar with uh, Amy Bilquist. So you guys should definitely check those out. I've also put up a, uh, an offer on your screen um, for something called Swim Videos On Demand. You can find it manually at swimvideos.net if you want. It's filled with hundreds of drills and full of really useful in, uh, swimming information along with explanations from our top clinicians or just click that offer on the side of your screen. This is a great time to sit down and really pick apart what you're doing and try to gain as much not knowledge as possible. And our app is a really great source of information. Thank you very much to everybody who attended today. As always, stay safe, stay positive, keep a lookout for future events and wash your dang hands. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Thanks guys.